My first reflections from my childhood that our city is very beautiful in comparing with the city around and uh, very rich. I asked my mom why our city is not the same like the cities around and she told me that we don't ask about this. Two members of my family, my grandmother who was working like a nuclear engineer, like a first builder of my yacht, and my father, who was liquidator and engineer, died from cancer. I did not ask why. In 1957, a massive nuclear accident took place at the top secret Mayak nuclear station in the Soviet Union. At the time, it was the largest nuclear disaster in history. Despite its size, Soviet authorities managed to keep the accident a secret for almost four decades. The story of Mayak is rooted in the early days of the Cold War arms race. When Stalin learned of the US nuclear program, he gave orders to accelerate the Soviet Union's own atomic bomb project. The Soviet Union engaged on the construction of several secret sites, and one of the most important of these sites was the Mayak nuclear facility. And it was at Mayak that the nuclear material was produced for the first Soviet atomic bomb. There was a secret city near what, what is called Chelyabinsk, was called Chelyabinsk 40. That was an atomic city that didn't exist on a map. And the people who lived there and their families, they officially didn't exist. Azersk is called a city. In Russian law, it means that there is a special system of authorization. Only people who are permanent inhabitants of this city can live there and can come. I have known that there is a plant. Uh, my father was engineer on this plant. Most of people in our city were working for this plant, and that's all. The problem was that the nuclear facilities at Mayak were built in great haste. Stalin gave the Soviet nuclear program top priority in order to catch up with the US. So because of the speed of construction, security and safety regulations were often ignored. In the beginning, the Soviets simply dumped nuclear waste from Mayak in the nearby Techa River, polluting the water source for thousands of villagers. Upon realizing the dangers of this, they switched to disposing of nuclear waste in underground storage facilities. In 1957, when the cooling of um, one of the nuclear waste storages failed and um, the liquid evaporated and concentrated and that led to a chemical explosion which was so violent that it released a huge amount of radioactivity into the, into the atmosphere. The plume from Kishtim was rather concentrated, I would say. So it was not spread into the higher atmosphere like Chernobyl, because Chernobyl was, there was um, some, some thermal input from, from the overheated reactor. That accident would have been the second place after Chernobyl, if you will. The immediate fallout of the blast seriously contaminated the surrounding area. Roughly 500,000 people were exposed to radiation, while 11,000 people from 23 villages were evacuated. The Soviets at the time, they were of course obsessed with secrecy. So the reason of the evacuation was, was never actually explained to, to the residents. Instead, they were told various stories, for example, that there was an outbreak of some special disease Researchers subsequently studied the behavior of the radioactivity. They even published it and they termed it an experimental large-scale release. Uh, secrecy was maintained almost at all costs. And the reasons for this, I think, are, are two. First, the atomic bomb project was a secret. The nuclear facility was secret. A second reason, the Soviets sent the first Sputnik into the orbit. It was a huge success, a huge propaganda success for the Soviet Union. So t talking about uh, an accident at the same time would have been a complete disaster for the Soviet Union. And it just didn't fit the story of how successful and technologically advanced this state was. In the ensuing decades, the disaster remained a closely guarded secret. 
It wasn't until the end of the USSR that details started to emerge, and the horrific impact of the fallout began being discussed. My first memory about how I have known about the accident of 57, it was written in a local newspaper. For me, it was a shock. I asked it to my mom. Did you know, and you know always this uh, truth that uh, the accident were serious, dumping of nuclear waste and uh, tens of villages which were evacuated, like after Chernobyl? And she told me, yes, of course, because uh, it's my profession. I was working for this department. And they said, but how is it possible to live in this life? It means that my father also died from the cancer and my grandmother, she told, yes, of course, they were liquidated, they had a huge doses. It's very difficult to say how many subsequently died from illnesses, mostly cancer, because this, uh, these effects were, were long term and, it's, they were, and there's no clear data on this. But we think that the numbers are in the tens of thousands. We have uh, terrible cases when the kids of second, third, and now even fourth generation suffer with different defects of birth. Uh, one my son had very serious problem with uh, his skin, and uh, one another son he had a six fingers, which were cut after birth. Compensation for the victims of Mayak has been minimal. Given that Mayak remains open and is Russia's most important nuclear site. There's little interest in the past. As recently as 2017, scientists in Europe detected a significant spike in radiation levels across the continent. They traced the spike to a nuclear release in the vicinity of Mayak. However, Mayak denied any such event had taken place. While it has been 64 years since the disaster and nearly three decades since the end of the Soviet Union, the story of Mayak remains a taboo subject, hidden behind the walls of closed cities and nuclear secrecy.